Joining us now on Dubai Air Show TV is uh, Frédéric from Etihad Engineering. Frédéric, thank you very much indeed for joining us on today's show. Um, tell me a little bit more about what Etihad Engineering does, and in particular what your focus in the company is. Okay, well, I'll give you maybe a little bit of a tidbit, you know, Etihad Engineering about what? 2,000 so people effectively uh, generating about, you know, north of 1.7 million hours of production. Uh, focusing really on three main areas, airframe, you know, type of work, and obviously component services, as well as engineering services. We have over the years developed, you know, a lot of our capability when it comes to engineering Part 21 Juliet, Part 21 Golf, as part of enhancing our full value, you know, uh, 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 stream for the portfolio of services that we provide to the customers. So effectively, that's what we do, nutshell. Where do I fit into this? I'm the Vice President of Commercial, so Technical Sales and Customer Service. So from a strategic perspective, you know, setting up the strategy to effectively bringing the work in and effectively ensuring that, you know, we deliver and support our customers throughout the process. So, because as of today, um, we have about 75%, you know, of our load is from third party. A lot of, you know, some people actually don't know about that, you know, they're thinking we're mainly an Etihad, you know, Airways shop, which is not the case, okay? So, so that's, uh, that's where we are, and we continue to, to, to look at really, you know, what the market requires, because we, we don't want to say, listen, we've done a lot of work over the last four years to enhance, again, you know, the value that we deliver to the, to the market. But at the end of the day, the market doesn't stand still. We know that, you know, complacency would kill us. And so we're always, you know, trying to look at how we can reinvent ourselves from an efficiency standpoint, purely from an operational perspective, but also how do we, you know, lump, loop in, for example, technology, okay? How, how do we, you know, look into some of those MRO innovations, uh, technological innovations that can effectively deliver benefits to our customers? But the problem with technology, you know, is that, a lot of buzzwords, we're all excited, but then, you know, what does the customer take in today versus, you know, uh, 10 years from now, five years from now, and that's really the, the big difference. So what we've done is we, we put a, a steering, an innovation steering committee, but really to look at it from our customer's eyes because there's a lot of, you know, technological advancements that we could use, you know, from big data to IoT to 3D printing and things like this. Uh, to really what is it that we can deliver, okay? Uh, number one, short term, and how is it we can transpose that, you know, back to our customers. As an example, I think we've announced, you know, uh, uh, last week, 3D printing, we finally opened, you know, the uh, Yasa approved lab on the 3D printing side, being able to uh, print, you know, cabin parts, something that we can do very quickly uh, at a fraction of the cost, and effectively with better even durability. So. That's one. We're looking also at drones inspections. You know how we can use this to you know improve our processes. You know uh, uh, lower the the, the maintenance cost effectively through the hours. To, you know to our customers. So those are little things that we're doing. You know day in and day out. These are technologies, and you're right. As you walk around the show floor here, and if you've been part of many industries for a little while, you hear about additive manufacturing, Internet of Things, uh, and so on. Yet it seems to take an awfully long time before they manifest themselves as customer value. Um, let's take, I'm going to throw uh, another term out there and see if you can catch it for me. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, in what ways are you thinking about or already uh, using those suite of technologies to bring value to your customers? So, so you know, the, the interesting thing is actually by looking at such technology you know, av being available in the market, it actually forces us to look at ourselves in the mirror. You know, because because right now it's like, you know, you, you don't go and let's just purchase AI and say, okay, fine, you know, everything is done, now you'll be able to deliver value. No, we looked at it. We looked at, okay, with all the systems that we have in place, you know, we've just actually upgraded Oracle because we have an Oracle solution. We just upgraded. And we say, oh, now about AI, it's all about having, you know, data analyst, you know, to be able to, because if you don't have the data, you know, and if you don't collect it, analyze it in the right way, then AI is not going to help you, you know, uh, uh, very much. So, so are we going to be able, when it comes to AI, are we going to be able to deliver value to our customers in the short term? The answer is no. But what it does, it has allowed us to, to start getting ready for you know, that time. For example, you know, looking at you know, the upgrades of all of our systems, the cleansing 
and the analytical you know, uh, uh, um, uh, analysis of all the data that we have. So now whenever AI you know, comes in, then we can start delivering value, okay? But again, we have different technology readiness levels for different, you know, opportunities. Uh, AI is, let's just say, it's not that TRL7 yet, you know, we're, we're still a bit, you know, lower, so. But the fact is, you know, you look at a lot of those other technologies, Internet of Things, for example, data is being generated and collected at a rate that is unprecedented. AI offers an opportunity to do something with that data to try and get some value with it. But as far as you're concerned, the tools aren't quite there, not quite yet. And we and we are not let's, we are not quite ready ourselves because you know for, for it to deliver the optimal value back to the customer, you need to have you know the necessary platform internally, and then you need to add obviously you know the right technological you know advancement. Today we're 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 focusing on this as this continues to get developed, and then we'll put the two together to offer you know what we can do the best for our customers. So. Frederic, before we go, uh, just tell me what you're most looking forward to at this year's Dubai Air Show. Listen, Dubai Air Show is one of us here of our favorite shows, you know, being, uh, you know, locals here at the end of the day. Uh, it, listen, it's another opportunity to get, continue to get closer to our customers, continue to, you know, uh, uh, look for opportunities with our partners, okay, to come up with, you know, uh, new solutions. Because at the end of the day, we're moving as an MRO, we're continuously moving away from a service, okay, uh, providing a service to our customers rather than you know providing solutions to our customers and for that it's all about adaptability flexibility which is something that we really you know we, we, we think we're really good and this is one of the major you know reasons why customers you know on top of our performance delivery and reliability and competitiveness it's one of the reasons that customers come in because we just don't deliver services we deliver solutions so that's the reason why Frederic terrific to talk to you uh, thank you very much Great indeed for your time much. here Thank you very much. Uh, for more news and analysis, uh, do keep it locked to the big screens around the venue here at the Dubai Air Show, online and of course on social media.